So for those who are not aware, Elizabeth Warren, Ayanna Presley, and Mayor Michelle Wu uh, actually had an event here. I thought about going to it, then I was, because of the day and the time, it wouldn't have worked out well. But uh, they did have an event to speak to their constituents. And let's just say there were a couple of visitors in the audience that had some things to say to Elizabeth Warren. Now you guys know Jose, he's been on the show before. Jose is basically starting a, a slow movement, so to speak, where he has, is having other people actually join him in confronting politicians. So it's not just Jose anymore. It's not just uh, people that are a part of the LaRouche uh, movement. This is now starting to spread to other cities, other states, more people are joining. And Jose has actually been training people how to do this. So this event happened with Elizabeth Warren and she's confronted not once, not twice, but if I remember correctly, three different times about this war with Russia and Ukraine and other things as well. Let's get into it. Senator, we need you to intervene to stop this war in Ukraine. I hear you. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Hello. So let me start by saying hello, Roxbury. Okay, so the gentleman right here is confronting her about Russia and Ukraine. And you notice her response was, I hear you. We're going to talk. But she's not going to talk about it. She doesn't want to talk about it. She's been confronted about this before. In fact, none of these politicians really want to talk about it, right? But he's doing the right thing here. He's putting her on the spot in front of the people. Now, she goes on to say, hello, Roxbury. So for those who are not familiar, uh, Roxbury is a neighborhood here in Boston. It is predominantly African-American uh, neighborhood. That is changing a little bit because of gentrification. But one of the things that really kills me about the speech that she gives at this event is that she seems to make it all about her which is something that Elizabeth Warren is accustomed to doing. She tends to do this. I, 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 I was the first that did this. I came from a family that didn't have that. I didn't have this. They took this away from me. I, 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 instead of focusing on the needs of the people. And I think this is important for anyone who's watching and is considering running for office. We don't really need to hear about what you came from, did and all that stuff after you're elected. We don't really need to hear all these I statements. We need you to say we statements. We need you to talk about the community as a whole. But Elizabeth Warren, she loves to brag about what she was able to accomplish because she didn't come from a political background. Let's go ahead and get into it. Sir, stop thank funding you, Ukrainian Nazis. Sir, sir, we're gonna ask you to leave. You need to kick Joe Biden's ass so he stops the war. He said, you need to kick his ass. <laughs> straight to the point, straight to the point. I love it, I love it. We need yes, negotiations. We don't need to be sending weapons to Ukrainian Nazis. You can try. So he's talking about, he's complaining about the weapons. He's complaining about the Nazis in Ukraine. And honestly, like he has a pretty loud voice because he doesn't have a microphone. She does have a microphone and he sounds like he's louder than her. So that's really interesting. You are my senator. It is your highest responsibility to prevent a nuclear war. Okay, I'm gonna rewind back a little bit because this is where she starts to talk about herself. You have to listen closely to hear it. We don't need to be sending weapons to Ukrainian Nazis. You can try. Okay, so she said, I am someone who never ran for public office. Told you she likes to talk about herself a lot. Let's go on. I have no You are my senator. It is your highest responsibility. She said, I have no electoral history, but I started out by coming to Roxbury. Okay. Prevent a nuclear war. There is no other subject on the agenda. Let's get you over this I voted for you. I voted for you. Let's get you over this. Stop nuclear war. 
weapons to Ukrainian Nazis, and you voted for it. So that's the gentleman there. And again, he's calling her out about sending the weapons. And what's interesting, again, like I said, this is Roxbury, predominantly African-American neighborhood. The people who are surrounding him right now, these are most likely people that are either part of her campaign or one of these politicians' campaigns. Remember, it's her, Mayor Michelle Wu, and Ayanna Presley that are at this event. Go. Sir, we're asking I might you to vote leave. for you if you do Sir, that. We are asking you to leave. I heard We you. are asking you to leave. It's your we responsibility. You Sorry, it's time to go. Eight Please, billion people will die to in the new people care more about hearing from a snake politician than listening to what this guy is saying because he's telling the truth, unlike Elizabeth Warren. We are asking you to leave. It's your we responsibility. You Sir, it's time to go. Eight Please, billion it is people will die in the nuclear Thank war, you. the you. one we're headed Thank to, you. because you keep Thank arming you. Nazis. You. You have to you. keep Sir. sending you. missiles. There's nothing he said there that's incorrect. And notice Elizabeth Warren, she doesn't want to address it. This is what I've said before. When she said in the beginning, we're going to talk, we're going to talk. No, she has no intention on talking about this. After this clip, I'm going to show you some of the issues with Elizabeth Warren when it comes to foreign policy, because a lot of people, they applaud her for her policies and her decisions in reference to domestic issues, but they are clueless in reference to how Elizabeth Warren feels about foreign policy. And people need to pay attention to this. Send tanks. You send jets. Go ahead, man. To Nazis in Ukraine. All right, thank you, it's sir. got to thank stop. You. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Senator, you did nothing on Glass Eagle. So this is the other. This is the other gentleman. You should have stood up and done something about this banking crash. This whole system is coming down. And this whole system is coming down and you did nothing. Now okay, let's talk about the banking crisis. Now, why is he calling her out for that? Remember, Elizabeth Warren, that was her big thing when she ran the first time for senator. The big thing that she pressed on was not just the student loan thing. She brought that up too, but was the banking industry, right? She was one of the people that applauded Occupy Wall Street. She was one of the people that criticized the United States government choosing to bail out the banks instead of the American people that lost their homes. So he has every right here to confront her about the banking crisis because that is her big thing. And she really isn't talking about it for the most part. Let's go on. So he says, now we'll leverage the derivatives. Debt is 99 to one. Let me back up just a little bit. There we go. The whole system is coming down and you did nothing. Now we'll leverage the derivatives debt is 99 to one. These big banks are about to blow and you did nothing. You're a phony. At least the Republicans tell you when they're gonna screw you. Get your hands off me. He's 100% right. At least Republicans, <clears throat> he said she's a phony, which she is. I've been telling people this for years. He said, at least Republicans tell you when they're going to screw you. Not Miss, not Miss, Miss, I'm Native American Elizabeth Warren. You gotta do something about this, and you gotta do it now. This system is coming down. Let's actually protect people by stopping a drive for nuclear war. This is the third gentleman. Why aren't you investigating the explosion of the Nord Stream pipeline? You know that the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline as an attack against a NATO ally in Germany and against a nuclear power. You used to fight on principle. It's why I campaigned for you. Notice when he's speaking, you don't hear as many people in the crowd trying to boo or chant over him. Now, he brought up the Nord Stream issue, which I think more Americans are waking up to this, that article that was written by Seymour Hirsch. And we need to continue to talk about it. 
More people are starting to wake up. When you start mentioning that story, let's talk about the Nord Stream pipeline. People are like, oh, well, wait, what is he talking about? I'm not sure I heard about this. What is this about? But he goes on to mention that he campaigned for her. See, this is the thing. A lot of these politicians, they forget about the people who knocked on doors for them, who phone bank for them, who canvassed for them, who helped them raise a lot of money to help them get elected. And I want to be really clear about Elizabeth Warren in case you're not from Massachusetts and you're not familiar. The first time Elizabeth Warren uh, won, it was very close. It was not a landslide for people who are not aware. The gentleman that she ran against, uh, he was more like a moderate Republican, so to speak. Scott Brown, I believe was his name. But that was actually very close. It was actually younger people who came out to support her that put her over the finish line because one of the things that she ran on was canceling the student loan debt and that the government should be bailing out the students who have this debt. So that really went over well with a lot of younger people, right? The second time that she ran, she ran against a Trump Republican, Jeff Deal. He actually just ran for governor. I don't know, this guy keeps running for office. But he was a big Trump supporter, and he actually had the support, believe it or not, of Governor Baker from Massachusetts. So I believe the reason why she won the second time, which she won by a longer, a larger percentage, is because she was running against a Trump-like Republican. So I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I really do believe that somebody needs to primary challenge Elizabeth Warren from the left in this state. It's time for her to go. A lot of people campaigned for her. And after she won the second time for that Senate race, not too long after that, she announced she was running for president, which is exactly what Jeff Deal told us during the debates. He said, she's not worried about this state. She's trying to run for president. He was right about that. Now, Jeff Deal's still a clown. <clears throat> just being real, but that was her intention all along. So you have to really ask yourself, what has Elizabeth Warren really done for the people here in Massachusetts? Because I haven't seen it. What I have seen her do is I've seen her talk about that she's Native American, which that is proven to be false. I have seen her uh, claim that she was a special education teacher for like uh, as a career she didn't even teach for a full year. These are the things people need to know. I'm sorry, I'm calling all this out. She didn't even teach for a full year. So I don't know what to tell you. She used to be a Republican. Now, this is not to say that people can't change, but I'm just here to let you know, Elizabeth Warren is not as progressive as she claims to be. Let's go on. And let's not forget how she pointed fingers and tried to say that Bernie Sanders was misogynistic and said that a woman would never be president or can't be president or something like that. Elizabeth Warren is a snake. She stayed in that presidential race. She knew damn well in 20 for 2020, she had no chance of winning at that point. And she stayed in the race on Super Tuesday to weaken the support for Bernie Sanders and to divide that vote. There's no doubt in my mind some of those people that voted for Elizabeth Warren would have ended up voting for Bernie Sanders, but she stayed in to fuck that up. I'm sorry, like she, she made me feel some kind of way about that. She really does. Let's go on. Why are you now refusing you, to have an investigation you, of the explosion of the Nord Stream pipeline? And this is the question that continues to come up. Now, if you're looking for that post, that was posted by uh, Jose Vega. He goes on to say him, his friends, they were there to confront Senator Warren, Ayanna Presley, and uh, Mayor Wu. Mayor Michelle Wu was there as well. Now, as I told you, a lot of times Elizabeth Warren is applauded because of her position on domestic issues. So much to the point that people tend to turn a blind eye to her foreign policy views. But where does will Elizabeth Warren stand on foreign policy? Now, you see, Common Dreams, they actually wrote about this. They were warning people about Elizabeth Warren back in 2019, right before the 2020 election. Listen to this. Elizabeth Warren on war and peace. Warren's troubling foreign policy history includes uncritical support of Israel, supporting sanctions on Venezuela, 
and vilifying Russia and China as national security threats. But our views are also evolving. Pay attention to the Russia and China piece. So that is important because keep in mind, this was before the conflict with Russia and Ukraine, and she already had a negative opinion about Russia. Let's go on. This is the piece I think that is crucial. In domestic politics, Warren makes a populist appeal to working people with calls for free college tuition, single payer health care, and breaking up monopolies. In foreign policy, she takes a similar stand calling for an end to foreign trade pacts such as Trump's renegotiated NAFTA. She wrote in Foreign Affairs, while international economic policies and trade deals have worked gloriously well for elites around the world, they have left working people discouraged and disaffected. Listen to this piece here. Warren's foreign policy lies somewhere in between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. She has a troubling history of uncritical support of Israel, supporting sanctions on Venezuela, and vilifying Russia and China as national security threats. Then it goes on to say her views are evolving. In 2014, Israel launched a horrific war on Gaza, dropping bombs on densely inhabited cities. The United Nations reported that more than 2,100 Palestinians died compared to 66 Israelis. When challenged by a constituent in 2014 about her support for Israel, Warren responded, America has a very beautiful relationship with Israel, and we very much need an ally in that part of the world. It gets worse. She opposed making U.S. aid contingent on prohibiting new Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. This is probably the worst of it all right here. She opposed making U.S. aid contingent on prohibiting new Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. For people who chose to vote for her for 2020, I'm pretty sure they were not aware of her opinions about Israel and Palestine. I'm pretty sure they were not knowledgeable about this. Thank you, Edward. You said it right out loud. I'm pretty sure. Let's go on. It gets worse. But in 2018, Warren condemned the Israeli military violence against Palestinians protesting peacefully at the Israel-Gaza border. The Israel lobby has pushed hard for the U.S. Senate to oppose the movement to boycott, divest, and sanction Israel. Now, here's a piece to her credit. To her credit, Warren voted against such a resolution February 2019. Most recently, she joined with Sanders and others to oppose Israeli annexation of the West Bank. While Warren is moving in the right direction, I would like to see her make a clear cut statement opposing Israeli settlements in Palestinian territory. Commit to moving the US embassy back to Tel Aviv and call for an independent, contingent Palestinian state, which would live peacefully next to a non aggressive Israel. So, this piece here, she still refuses to oppose the settlements, and that is very crucial. Let's go on. When asked about views on Venezuela, this piece right here, Warren co-sponsored a Senate bill proposing to bar U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. But in February... She called for economic sanctions on Venezuela along with increased foreign aid. In this context, sanctions are part of the plan to unseat Maduro. I would like to see Warren take a firm stance against all U.S. intervention, economic, political, or military. When it comes to Russia, China, and North, North Korea, 
Mainstream Democrats have a long history of trying to sound tough on national defense while attacking Republicans from the right. Unfortunately, Warren is no exception. Last year, as Trump prepared to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Warren issued a bellicose statement. A nuclear arm North Korea is a threat to the security of the United States, our allies in the world. This administration's success will be judged on whether it can eliminate Kim's nuclear weapons and verify they are gone. While Trump can be erratic and subject to pressure from his right wing advisors, at least he is willing to discuss denuclearization of the region and compare Warren's view with Sanders statement about the same summit. The meeting represents a positive step in de-escalating tensions between our countries, addressing the threat of North Korea's nuclear weapons and moving towards a more peaceful future. Warren also falls into the Cold War trap of vilifying Russia and China as a danger to Americans. This is her. China is on the rise, using its economic might to bludgeon its way onto the world stage. China is on the rise. Why is that a problem? Why does she have a problem with another country succeeding economically. I've been telling you guys about this. This is what it's really about. It's about the economy. It's about how they're doing economically when comparing them to the United States. They're getting too close. They're a competitor now. And that's not what the United States wanted. When we talked about the Wolfowitz Doctrine, it said the same thing, same thing, that no other country should be able to rival the United States. That goes back to the 1990s. That's the Wolfowitz Doctrine. Look it up. Let's go on. She goes on to say to mask its decline, Russia is provoking the international community with opportunistic harassment and covert attacks. She goes on to claim that both countries invest heavily in their militaries and seek to shape spheres of influence in their own in interest uh, image. Listen to this. Both countries invest heavily in their militaries. So do we. So why is it okay for the US to do it, but it's not okay for them to do it? And last time I checked, Russia and China don't have over 700 bases around the world. We do. You see the problem with these remarks? This is Elizabeth Warren on foreign policy. That's why she doesn't want to answer that question about sending aid, sending money to Ukraine. That's why she doesn't want to answer the question when people say, do you support a call for peace? That's why she doesn't want to answer it. Let's go on. This piece right here. Nowhere does Warren mention that the United States spends more on its military than the next seven largest countries combined. Russia and China have limited military bases outside their borders, while the United States has over 800, 800, excuse me. Unfortunately, Warren helps propagate the myths of cunning and fearsome enemies, which are used to justify ever rising defense budgets and future wars. On foreign policy, Elizabeth Warren needs a lot of work. Now, before I told you this today, how many of you knew that's where she stood on foreign policy? I feel like a lot of people don't know this because the focus with her tends to be on domestic issues. We got to start looking at both. I seriously, seriously encourage someone to primary challenge Elizabeth Warren, someone who was anti-war, someone who was anti-imperialist, hopefully someone who's independent or someone who's from a third party. I encourage anybody else. You know, I would like to see, and she has not told me this, I would like to see Jill Stein primary challenge Elizabeth Warren. I would like to see Jill Stein on a debate stage with Elizabeth Warren, especially when it comes to foreign policy. 
That's what I would like to see. That would be interesting. <laughs> interesting. Thank you so much for the super sticker, Abedin 71 Boop, boop. Deneen, I love that they're getting called out. I do too. I love it. I love it. I love it. But somebody needs to challenge Elizabeth Warren. I'm sorry. And not Jeff Deal, okay? Jeff Deal needs to stop running for office. Just stop. <laughs> you try to, too many positions here. Thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Keel. Elizabeth Warpig. People don't talk about this when they talk about Elizabeth Warren. They talk about her on domestic issues, but they don't talk about how she is on foreign policy. It's interesting to me. Interesting. 